LucasArts. Who hasn't played a LucasArts game? And if you haven't played one, then I'm sure you're familiar with the company's creator, George Lucas. You know, the Star Wars guy. LucasArts, which was originally called Lucasfilm Games, was founded in 1982. George Lucas wanted to hop on the video game Money Train, so he created this company so they could expand their horizons. Today, LucasArts is known for its list of amazing, technically sound games, including a pretty impressive list of adventure games. In fact, the LucasArts adventure games are considered by many to be some of the best in the genre. A lot of the early games to come out of this company were highly innovative action games. It wasn't until 1986 when they started to dive into the graphical adventure game genre with the title Labyrinth, and yes, it was inspired by the Jim Henson film of the same name. To be completely truthful with you, I don't remember too much about Labyrinth. In my mind, LucasArts' successful reign in the adventure game genre started in 1987 with Maniac Mansion, which also introduced the scum engine that was used on the preceding adventure games from then on. Following Maniac Mansion were several successful titles like The Secret of Monkey Island and Indiana Jones, and I liked those games a lot, but there was one title I felt really attracted to in the most uncreepy way possible because inanimate objects are not people and I cannot attain a companionship or tangible loving bond with type of way. And that game is Sam and Max Hit the Road from 1993, one of the most obtuse, zany, and hilarious games I've ever played. Look at all this stuff. It's beautiful. The game is based on the comic book series Sam and Max Freelance Police, which was created by Steve Purcell in the late 1980s. And why not make these comics into a video game? The characters and stories are fantastic. Sam, as you can see, is a gigantic dog wearing a hat. And Max is... I don't know, some kind of psychotic rabbity thing with ravenous teeth and a penchant for death, but somehow still remains adorable because bunnies. I mean, when are bunnies ever not cute? Never mind, bunnies are psycho. There's nothing more amusing than animals doing people things. A dog and a bunny being freelance police and demanding justice? Amazing. Here's a clip of my bird doing people things to drive my point home. She's playing a tiny piano. Isn't that great? When you boot up the game, you'll get a really beautiful cutscene featuring Sam and Max saving someone from an evil robot. When they're done, they jet back to their office where you can kind of talk to them and see what they're all about. Well, that was a pleasantly understated credit sequence. I enjoyed the cheesy retro ambiance. What the hell are you talking about, Max? If you've read the comics, then you already have a grasp on the story and these characters, which is perhaps why there isn't much backstory at first, but don't worry, you'll become very familiar with them because these characters talk a lot. Max, where should I put this so it doesn't hurt anyone we know or care about? Out the window, Sam. There's nothing but strangers out there. Sam and Max resemble two hard-boiled P.I.s with an eye for justice. So hard-boiled. But looks can be deceiving. Think about a cheesy buddy cop film. No, not like Bad Boys, more like the Blues Brothers. Except the Blues Brothers aren't really cops, but they drive a cop car, so close enough. Another film this game reminded me of is actually Roger Rabbit. Sam is the hard-boiled detective, and Max is... Roger Rabbit, sort of. If I mentioned I really like the word hard-boiled, man. Hard-boiled, it's just so noir. It reminds me of eggs, hmm. So Sam and Max get a call from the commissioner. Apparently a Bigfoot has gone missing from his home, which happened to be a carnival in which he was kept in a block of ice. Yes, this game is about Bigfoots. I know that sounds rather odd, but it is based off of the Sam and Max comic that was also about a Bigfoot who disappears from a carnival. We soon find out through a reliable source that Bruno the Bigfoot had been having a salacious affair with Trixie, the giraffe-necked girl. That's right. She read to him a scandalo. There's also this character whom you keep bumping into, and he seems to be a rather suspicious sort. Apparently he has ties to Bruno the Bigfoot, so he becomes a person of interest. His name is Conroy Bumpus. That's unfortunate. Now we must discover and follow leads to absurd tourist traps across the US, which I at first found very hard to believe since we're driving across the country in a matter of seconds to get to our destinations, but then I realized I'm playing as a talking dog and bunny, so I guess it's not too much of a stretch. In terms of humor, this game is as dry as my grandma's cupcakes. If you like dry humor, you will love this game. It's also quite ponderful and very witty with awesome wordplay. But damn, this game is as hard as... Well, my grandma's cupcakes. She wasn't a very good baker. Some of these puzzles are just plain cruel. Here's a puzzle where you have to lure alligators into creating a path for you by punting fish into the water with a golf club, which is frustrating, but not quite as frustrating as MacGyvering your own Bigfoot outfit, in which you have to bungee jump for one of the components. Pro tip to all cosplayers, make your outfits with tar. That is some industrial strength shit right there. Now 
the costume is covered with tar. You also have to turn a cat inside out to get a clue, and man, it's pretty graphic. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the very cartoony violence of Looney Tunes. You know, the kind PETA would have a field day with. Though this is animals being violent against other animals, so I think we can get away with calling this the circle of life. This is just evolution. This right here. This fisherman has been fishing all his life in hopes for the perfect trout. But whatever, wipe him. Wow, that was somewhat disturbing. I'm sure he's fine. You yourself cannot actually die in this game. It relies more on difficulty and puzzle solving, wherein every time you solve a puzzle, you push the game forward. In fact, if death was also a threat next to the esoteric inventory puzzles, I'm not sure I would play it. Though I do like difficult games, I can't exactly enjoy the story if I simply can't get anywhere. I love death scenes, and they obviously have their place in video gaming, but maybe just not in this one. Let's talk about some of the characters. Now, in terms of story, I found this one personally to be rather weak. So what really made this game stand out for me and what made it really enjoyable were the characters and their personalities. Like I said before, Sam is a huge dog. He has a very laid-back demeanor, and despite his rather weird methods of solving crime, he's really smart and funny. I'm Sam. He's Max. We savagely protect the rights of innocence. Max is a psycho, as mentioned before, but look how cute he is. Look at the cutesy wootsy bunny bunny. Gratuitous acts of senseless violence are my forte. You're such an adorable urchin, Max. These characters complement each other really well, and for some added difficulty, which I'm not sure was even really necessary, sometimes you have to use Max to solve some of the puzzles. Like making him chew off a bunch of grody mammoth hair from an animatron. Fine work, Max. Now we've got more full woolly mammoth hair than we'll ever need, and we've learned an important lesson. Yeah, the woolly mammoths died of embarrassment. Conroy Bumpus, which I imagine is some kind of homage to Conway Twitty and Elvis Presley, is a money-loving musician who uses Bigfoots to do all of his bidding. Yep, that's right. Turns out he actually found Bruno, and he's forcing him and Trixie to play in his band, despite never having any audience. His role is literally to find Bigfoots to be in his band so he can play horrible country music for eternity, a grave future I wish on nobody. You also have a huge list of supporting characters you meet at every location on the map. Old Hollywood actresses, mole men, a Bigfoot that seriously sounds like Jimmy Stewart. Are there any more shrimp balls back here? Who, who are you? Overly friendly athletic women? But I'm sure a great big hunk of fur like yourself would have no problem. And of course, my personal favorite character, Snucky of Snucky's Gas Station. Are you in charge here? Don't I wish. I'd have to go to Snucky U for another six years before I could run this place. This game, as you can imagine, is very, very heavy on the dialogue. But as long as the dialogue is funny and engaging, I don't really mind it in larger volume. The only drawback to this is when you become seriously stuck on a puzzle, it becomes tiresome to keep going back to the characters and listening to those huge dialogue trees. But it's very obvious that a lot of skill went into writing them, and each character feels developed in its own weird way. The only significant qualm I have about this game as a whole is the ending. But before I move on, spoiler alert. By the end of this game, you find a community of Bigfoots, whom you save from Conroy Bumpus's weird obsessive control issues, and then help them by figuring out a way to save Bigfoots from human captivity. After more puzzles and combining some sacred ingredients, some magic happens that causes gigantic redwood trees to sprout up all over the country, causing mass destruction and hysteria to towns and cities. And you win, leaving behind a trail of annihilation in your wake. Well, that was one heck of an impressive display. And actually highly destructive to boot. My honest personal opinion about the ending is that I just didn't feel very epic when I won. I felt like this game, though amazingly fun and hilarious and engaging, didn't really reward me with anything particularly great. I do think adventure games are way more about the ongoing journey than the conclusion of the game, but I did find it kind of abrupt. It was just kind of like, yep, 
we're weird, that's us, two wild and crazy guys. And I'm sitting here thinking, what the fuck just happened? It's probably suitable for a Sam and Max story, but I have to be honest and say that it left something to be desired for me. Despite my feelings on the conclusion of this game, I still really like it and of course I think it's worth checking out. If you can somehow stop yourself from the temptation of looking up internet walkthroughs, then you found yourself an extremely challenging game. And if you end up cheating, like a giant cheating cheater, then you're still in for a great story and most definitely some laughs. Let's do George. George, George, Bo Forge, Banana, Fana, Bo Forge, B5, Bo Forge, George. There isn't any president. We can't rhyme. Let's do Thomas. Thomas, Thomas, Bo Thomas, Banana, Fana, Bo Thomas, B5, Bo Thomas, Tom. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video. If you're interested in playing this game, you can find it on GOG.com. If you're interested in seeing more videos from my channel, then you are the best person I have ever met. Bless you. Click the annotations on the screen to check out more content. And if you want to message me things about video games or breakfast recipes, feel free to click on my social network annotations. Now if you don't mind, I have some hard-boiled things to do.